please be seated. is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear the key document presentation by the lead co-lawyers for civil parties, as well as the defense team for Keith and Pond, regarding the three targeted groups, namely the Cham, the Vietnamese, and the former officials of the Khmer Republic regime. Yesterday, the Grafie uh, received a request from the International Deputy co prosecutor for an additional time in relation to the key document presentation on the treatment of the former officers of the Republic regime. And we uh, will uh, make a ruling on this before we hand the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties and the defense team for kills and pawn. Mr. M. Hoy, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals to today's proceedings. Grafie, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present, except the Defense Council for uh, Nuanjia, that is Council Vita Kope, who is absent without uh, reasons. Mr. Nuanjia is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the uh, Grafie. Thank you. President, thank you. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nguyen Chia. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nguyen Chia dated 24 February 2016, which states that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 24 February 2016 hearing. He affirms that his counsel has advised him about the consequences of this waiver, that it cannot in any account be construed as a waiver of his right to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented to or admitted by this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nguyen Chia by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 24 February 2016, which notes that Nguyen Chia has chronic back pain and it becomes severe when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs, based on the above information, and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs by audio visual means. The Chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunji can follow. This applies to the whole day. And before we proceed, the Chamber would like to inform the parties that uh, yesterday's afternoon, 
we received a request from the international co prosecutor for additional time to present some key documents in relation to the treatment of the former officers of the Khmer Republic regime. In order to clarify the matter, in particular the nature of the the nature and the arguments of the request, I'd like to hand the floor to the international co prosecutor to provide grounds for the request. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors uh, Council. Um, I I'll be brief. Um, uh, we apologize if we weren't clear yesterday what we were suggesting. Um, the time that was allocated to us was sufficient for us to cover the Cham and Vietnamese, which are two very big topics. The law null is an additional uh, topic, uh, and we realized um, uh, when Mr. S Smith addressed you yesterday that we weren't going to have time in yesterday to also uh, cover the law null. Um, so this is at your discretion. This is something we could do at another time. It's something we could do by a written Rule 92 submission. Um, but uh, we're not intending here to repeat matters that have been presented before. Um, the focus of the presentation, if we do it today, and it would be relatively short, th 30 minutes to, to maybe 40 minutes, uh, is to more to focus on the issue that has arisen in this trial uh, about the law no policy, and particularly in relation to the testimony uh, that there was a instruction, alleged instruction, some point two months after April 1975, not to harm certain ranks of, of, uh, of uh, uh, law and military people. So our presentation is focused on documents that relate to that issue. Now it's, again, it's something we can do other times, uh, another time. Uh, we know there is a schedule here today, so if, if there are, uh, if it would disrupt the plans uh, to not finish at noon today. It's something we can do at another time, but there are uh, documents we think we are important on that issue that at some point we would like to present helpful to your honors and I think helpful to the defense too. It's important I think for the defense to also understand the documents and evidence that we believe are particularly important on this issue. So that was the basis uh, for our request, uh, but we're at your discretion. President, any observations from other parties regarding the uh, request for additional time for key documents on the uh, treatment of the former officers and officers of the Khmer Republic regime? I'd like to now hand the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties if you wish to make observations regarding this request. Um, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. The lead co-lawyers do not have any objection to the request by the co-prosecutors. And for our part, we only need a, a short time to conclude our presentation. Thank you. President and the defense team for Noon Chia, do you wish to make any observations? National Council for Noon Cheer. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors and everyone. We, the defense team of Noon Cheer, do not have any observation to make. President, uh, what about the defense team for Kiev Sampon? Uh, I apologize, Mr. President, but I did not uh, get uh, the translation of what uh, my colleague Sonarun said. Uh, well, as far as the Kyosampan team is concerned, uh, we had objected uh, on the principle of revoking uh, the policy um, 
towards uh, the Khmer Republic. So under these conditions, uh, we are not going to object, uh, provided we are provided uh, explanations. In any case, uh, we're simply asking to have the possibility when it will be our turn to respond to also be given extra time uh, if this were uh, to provide uh, specific elements to our answers. President, the chamber now decides to grant uh, the request by the international co-prosecutor for an additional 40 minutes for key document presentation in relation to the treatment of the former soldiers of the Khmer Republic regime after 1975. You may proceed. Wait, um, Mr. President, do you wish to hand the floor to the co-prosecutor or to uh, the lead co-lawyers to conclude my remaining part? President, if there is a case, uh, you may proceed so that uh, you may conclude your uh, part and then the co-prosecutor can uh, proceed. So you had the floor first, uh, lead co-lawyer. Um, again, good morning, Mr. President, your honors, everyone in and around the courtroom. I will continue where I left off yesterday in relation to the uh, information by the civil uh, party applicants. I have six additional civil party applicants to cover. The information I'd like to present is in relation to the information of Do Jang Own. That is document E3 slash 5587 and EN in Khmer is at 0041-6802. Two zero three and English at zero zero four two six four six six two six eight French at zero zero four five five four zero five and I'd like to make the following a quote question. Please clarify the event when your siblings and parents were taken to be executed. Answer. On the night of 17 April 1975, all my family members were evacuated. We were prohibited from taking belongings along with us. We were told that we would return to them when it became quiet being afraid of Lunol area bombardments. One day I went to build a dam and my parents were at home and the other siblings went to the air mobile units. When I returned home, I saw the house became quiet. The neighbors who were also Vietnamese told me that my parents and siblings were taken to be executed. And they took me to hide. Question. Why did the Vietnamese who told you this news were not taken to be executed? Answer. When I arrived in Vietnam, the neighbors told me that my family was accused of being Viet Cong soldiers, so they were taken to be, ki to be killed. My family was not linked to Viet Cong. The neighbors also told me that my parents and siblings were transported in ox carts by Khmer people, who were biased people, to Gui village, the commune, Kampong Leng district, under the order of the Auk and the Ping. 
The Pieng was the person in charge of Kampong Lang district level. The persons in charge had held the list of people for ages, so they knew who was who. Question. Please describe the events when you went to Vietnam. Answer. We were told not to work on the day after, and they did not tell us any reason. On that day, pe people from all the villages who were Vietnamese came to attend a meeting at the commune located in Kia Mountain. With the participation of commune chief called Ta Ben, Ta Aok, Ta Meng, and Ta Mat, they announced that we were uh, taken by Vietnam back to the uh, country. The commune chief also said that the upper echelon also agreed with this. The meetings were also held in the other communes with the participation of the district leadership. At dawn at 4 a.m., the people walked to the river bank at Kampong Heru in Kampong Lang district. The people who walked at the back told me when we met on the ferry that the people at back were robbed of their belongings. I saw there were approximately seven to eight ferries, roughly 200 people being transported in each ferry. So the people who were placed in the lower floor were suffocated to death along the way. On the ferry, there were Khmerus in black clothes with a cap, and they were armed. When arriving in Kaom Samno, the people were told to walk up the island at the border. There, I saw a Vietnamese official named Nguyen Gia Dang, alias Ti Kam, who told me that we were exchanged with salt. My father and uncles mentioned the name of this person, and they knew the person named Ti Kam became, because he controlled all Vietnamese in Cambodia. On that island, the elderly told me that person was Ti Kam. I did not know the level of the Vietnamese officials who came to receive us, but they dressed as civilians. During the question, during the meeting to depart for Vietnam, did the people have choices or did they have to follow the order? Answer, no one dared to protest. Question, how was the selection at Om Som Not done? Answer, the people had to queue to enter the checkpoint one by one with the presence of only Vietnamese officials. If the Vietnamese did not accept them, the Khmer Rouge waiting outside would receive them. There were Khmer spouses who were not allowed to go with their family. The Khmer Rouge had already made a selection at Kia Mountain by putting Khmer people in one place and Vietnamese people in another place. Those at Kia Mountain who managed to arrive at Om Som No were mistakenly identified or disguised themselves with their family in order to go to Vietnam together. Question. As for the inspecting officials, did the Vietnamese side or Khmer side have stricter laws not allowing Khmer spouses to go? Answer. I saw that the Vietnamese officials were stricter, and I did not know what the agreement they had between the Khmer Rouge and between Khmer Rouge and Vietnam. And a bit further down, at question answer number ten, and I quote: "Question: When you were at Om Som No, how did they test the language?" Answer. During the inspection, the Vietnamese officials looked at complexion and the language. And if one looked like Khmer, he needed to have relatives who came with them to guarantee that the person was their nephew or child. 
before he was allowed to proceed. Their relatives or the people who went there did not come to receive them. At um, some no Khmer soldiers did not check the language or the rest because they had prepared the list or had already known those people at Kier Mountain. And there are ri written records of other civil parties who had a similar account regarding their, their journey through uh, Vietnam that is similar to this uh, Du Yang Su. That is E3 slash 5626. And uh, this document also has another uh, document ID that is E3 slash 4574. Uh, hold on, uh, and Judge Lavend, you have the floor. Oui, just une demande. Yes, just a request for a clarification in relation to the document that you just read out. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify that this is indeed a WRI, uh, not a civil party application. And also I note uh, in the list of documents that you provided to us ahead of time that the person involved apparently is deceased. So can you confirm that? Yes, Judge Lavange, uh, that is the written record of interview of a civil party with investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. And the civil party, Do Jiang Eun, is deceased. I hope the information is clear now for you, Your Honor. And Another information provided by a civil party in his uh, written record of interview of a uh, civil party, Trang Jung Jung, who is also deceased. That is document E3 slash 5588. Since the information is similar, I will skip this part. Now if I move on to another uh, civil party applicant, and I will brief on that. This is in relation to the killing of the Vietnamese in, in Prey Vang, as well as the anti-Vietnamese war and a purge uh, propaganda. I refer to the civil party application of Madame Chai It, that is document E3 slash 6088. She spoke about the events that happened to her husband, Ji Yun, when it happened in 1976 and 77 in Swai Jurum district in Prebei province. And the relevant year and in Khmer is at 00503242, English at 01137798, and French. I apologize, uh, there is no French year uh, and, however, the translation request has been made. The information is part of the, the document on the list that I sent to your honors and to uh, the uh, concerned parties. And allow me to quote. In July 1976, Sunwat, a commander of the platoon at Tria village, captured and guarded my husband as prisoner with Tatun and some other people whose names I had forgotten. Sun Wat, the commander of the platoon at Tria village, told my husband, Ji Jun, to leave separately from me. When two of us saw or met each other, we did not dare to speak or communicate with one another. 
Comrade Sun Wat made my husband work excessively, such as pulling out and transplanting rice seedlings, flowering or harvesting soil, carrying earth, and making fertilizer without rest and enough food to eat. In May 1977, my husband Ji Chun was killed by the Khmer Rouge. At first, Sun Wat, the commander of the platoon at Tria Village, accused him of being an enemy and a Vietnamese agent, though he knew nothing about that kind of thing. Sun Wat had my husband join a meeting at Swai Chum Pagoda. Sun Wat accused my husband of being an enemy and a Vietnamese agent and he had my husband join a meeting at Swai Chirum Pagoda, Swai Chirum Village, Swai Chirum Commune, Mesa District, Raven Province, with others whose names I have forgotten. When he arrived, the soldiers in black clad arrested him and interrogated him. He was beaten 50 times with rib for each time he was questioned. They said that if he confessed, they would allow him to return home. Because the torture was severe, beyond his ability to endure, he confessed that he was a Vietnamese agent, even though he was not involved in that at all. In the same month, that is in May 1977, those black-clad soldiers who were armed with guns received orders from Sun Vat, the platoon commander at Tria Village, to walk my husband from Tre Kabot Cooperative in Chai Village, Church Commune, Mesa District, Prevay Province, to Jung Chap Hill in Sapoa Village, Prey Totem Commune, Mesa District, Prevay Province. They led him there to be beaten to death. My husband disappeared since that time. That was what uh, Tun told me. He is now deceased. Another civil party whose civil application is E3 slash 6049. The civil party's name is Yung Yong, and the Khmer Eon is 00 through 53. English Eon is zero one one three seven 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 three. There is no French Eon, but uh, we have requested the translation into French. Let me quote as follows. In June 1976, Ul Yang, who was my father, was taken by Mao Pei, chairperson of Dom Village Cooperative, to Tul Prey Uncle Security Office, which was situated in Tlok Village, Pien Rong Commune, Prevang District, Prevang Province. Before he was arrested by Mao Pei, my father was sent by him to work in a craft factory in Dom Village with other elderly people. He was made to make some baskets, trays, shallow baskets, <coughs> racks, plows, shovel, shoveling baskets without getting time to rest. Suddenly in June 1976, my father was called to Tulpre Uncle Security Office around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. He was uh, then arrested and accused of being a Vietnamese. In fact, my father was a pure Khmer person. From the day that my father was taken to Tulpre Uncle Security Office in Tulok Village, Pien Orong Commune, to be educated, I have had no news about him.
and other civil party some sort. has also this um, cons relevant information. And let me quote the relevant E or a number in Khmer, 00501122223. English E or N is 01137782. French 01155136. Quotes. Hong Hen, who was my husband, when the Khmer Rouge took power, was forced by Ta Yip Ng and Ta Keng to work excessively without rest. Moreover, in November 1976, my husband Hong Hen was accused by Yip Ng and Ta Keng of having a Khmer body with a, with a Vietnamese hat, and they said that my husband wanted to rebel, though he was actually innocent. Yip Ng and Ta Keng sent him to Wat Niet Pagoda Niet Village, Swai Chrom Commune, Mae Sang District, Raven Province. Those who were accused were gathered and not permitted to contact their siblings or children. If they happened to see each other, they were to act as though they did not know each other. Yip Ng and Ta Keng forced my husband to work very hard. He was tasked with pulling, transplanting the right seedlings, carrying heavy loads, plowing, threshing, raising, land with the others whom they had gathered, including Ta Saum, Ta Yin, and others whose names I have forgotten. Each person has to work at maximum capacities to show that they had refashioned themselves. In February 1977, my husband Hong Hei was sent by Yip Ng and Ta Keng to Swai Chrum Detention of Office, Swai Chrum Village, Swai Chrum Commune, Mae Sang District, Brevain Province. The Khmer Rouge violently interrogated him using a security officer which uh, name uh, whose name I uh, have I do not know I did not know of Swai Chrum Detention Office. They asked him if he was a secret agent for the Vietnamese and who was working with him, but he rejected the accusation saying that he was not a secret agent and he did not know what they were talking about. After that they sent him to carrier. Then he was interrogated again at night time. They interrogated him until he gave his confession. If he hadn't confessed, they would have stopped hitting him. Since he was unable to withstand such harsh torture, he eventually gave false answers, saying he had conspired with those who had been executed earlier. The Khmer Rouge then sent him to carry the earth there with the others whom they had gathered, like the Sam, the Yin, and others whose names I have forgotten for many months. Then the Khmer Rouge sent him to make sewage at the Chertil in Kabal Kwai village, Swai Chirum Commune, Mae Sang District, Prevain Pro Province. In June 1978, he returned home, but after only a few days, he was sent to the production force at Pneel village. The Nien called him to go to get the clothes at what Chi Pot Pagoda, Mae Sang District, Prevain Province. On that day, my husband, Ta Saum, and Ta Yin left in the morning with the other gathered people, whose name I uh, have not known, and they have disappeared since that time. According to the villagers from Chi Pot, whose name I have forgotten, the gathered, the people who were gathered up and who whom the Khmer Rouge had asked to go to Wat Chi Pot Pagoda Mae Sang District, Preben Province, were all killed at a hill which was located to the north of Wat Chi Pot Pagoda. I will have two more civil party applications of which are very short. The first one is civil party application of Pain Son. E3 slash 
Eon in Khmer is 0050110 through 01. English Eon is 01137778 through 79. There is no French uh, Eon, but uh, we have requested the translation into French. Let me quote as follow. December 1976. Tapring Tavong and Sinwat accused my husband of being a Vietnamese agent. My husband did not know anything about this, but was taken to uh, the Gata Group at Swai Chrum Security Office, Mesang District, Preveng Province. When he was there, he was forced by the Khmer Rouge to do really excessive work. My husband said that he tried to work very hard trying to su suppress his anger, never having the courage to complain or be lazy because he wanted to be restored. He was prepared to make sacrifices for the revolution. No matter how hard he worked, he could not manage to be free from the conviction. January 1977. The Khmer Rouge sent my husband to a meeting in Wat Swai Chrum Pagoda in Swai Chrum village, Swai Chrum commune, Mesang district. However, actually, when he arrived there, the Khmer Rouge, whose name I do not know, captured and violently interrogated him. They hit him with a bamboo club or a whip, interrogating him at night time, and they did not permit him to scream. When he cried out, they hit him again. The Khmer Rouge asked him if he was really the Vietnamese agent. Whatever they asked, he had to answer accordingly without diverting from the questions at all. He could not endure the beating with the bamboo club and the whip, and so he just made up his answers. He said he was from the Vietnamese line, though he was actually not. Let me now move to the last civil party application. Um, this is the civil party Kung Von document E3 slash 5937A. This is a supplementary information of this civil party, and I will quote from the page from the uh, page uh, at uh, Khmer Eon 00585239. English is 01137902203. There is no French Eon, but we have requested the translation into French. Let me quote as follows. When the Khmer Rouge evacuated them from Koh, and uh, the English translation was written as Pukko, but actually it is Kokko. They kept killing people, especially those who tried to flee with the Vietnamese to Vietnam. Let me quote again. Let me start again. When the Khmer Rouge evacuated them from Kokko village, they kept killing people, especially those who try to plead with the Vietnamese to Vietnam. If these people were arrested, they were killed. In November 1978, the Khmer Rouge transferred all the people from Sumai Rieng to Pulsat and Badawang provinces. The procession started from Chere to Nhat Luang. Then the people were loaded into ferries and taken to Chiba Ampe. From there, they sent them to Preiswai by train. Upon arrival at Cham Roa, Phnom Krawain District, Posat Province, the base people came to collect them at night. Everyone from Swai Rieng was assigned to harvest rice. Then the Khmer Rouge soldiers accused them of being the enemies with the Khmer body and Vietnamese head. After they uh, did the harvesting, They told them to stand in rows, and they tied their hands up. Then they walked them into the forest and killed them. She, the, the civil party, witnessed the killings. Most of the people who were taken to be killed were males. Then they killed their wives and children. 
I am now concluded the presentation of the civil party application. And uh, Mr. President, my international colleague uh, requests to address the chamber for a few minutes. Mr. President, Mr. President, may I have a minute to make a presentation because I forgot to inform the party and the chamber of something important. I wanted to point out that the contents of all the documents that we have presented, that is what we presented yesterday and today, the contents of all the civil party applications and additional information on civil parties was cross-checked ahead of this hearing. Such cross-checking was done by the lawyers who cross-checked the contents of the information or by members of our team who also cross-checked the contents of the information we provided with the civil parties who, of course, were still uh, alive. I thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the additional time to explain to you the methodology that we used in obtaining these documents. President, so the floor is now given to the international deputy co-prosecutor to present the key documents the last batch of the key documents uh, in relation to the treatment of the three targeted groups. You may now proceed. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, Your Honors, uh, for the opportunity to uh, present on this last uh, group, this last targeted group. Um, there are three groups of documents I'm going to uh, discuss in this presentation. Uh, the first, um, Again, this is a presentation designed to provide you with documents that would be relevant to the assertion we've heard that two months, three months, at some point after 17 April, um, there was a meeting at which there was an instruction not to harm uh, law and people of certain rank. So I want to start with documents from the period before that, the period of April to May 1975, uh, a very important period uh, and documents that show what the policy or orders were in April and May 1975 relating to law and all officers and officials, uh, evidence that shows um, that such persons were in fact being uh, gathered and killed uh, pursuant to orders from the very top leaders. And I want to start um, very briefly uh, with evidence relating to the gathering of law and all officers and officials in Phnom Penh on the 17th of April 1975 uh, evidence showing that this was deliberate and organized um, John Swain the British journalist uh, his journal uh, document e3 slash 51 e351 English ERN s 000 3728, Khmer S006447097010, uh, French 00597835. Uh, this is a journal entry for 4 p.m. on the 17th of April. Quote, and he's describing the scene at the Ministry of Information. Uh, a place that John Swain and Sidney Shanberg uh, went at uh, in the afternoon on the 17th of April. This is how he described what was taking place. Quote, there were 50 prisoners lined up in front of the building. They included Lon Non, Marshal Lon Nol's younger brother. There were several generals and Hu Hang Sin director of the cabinet of Long Beret. At the information ministry, a man in black, about 35 and clearly a leader, bawled through a bullhorn at the prisoners, dividing them into three groups, military, political, and ordinary civilians. The Khmer Rouge training their guns on them were tough, strong looking, in jungle green, 
Mao hats, and the inevitable Ho Chi Minh sandals. Each one was a walking arsenal." End of quote. And also um, from Sidney Shanberg, uh, he wrote an article, uh, E3 3987, and the, the source of that article, Your Honors, um, came from his diary, uh, E236 slash 1 slash 4 slash 3.1. Let me repeat that, E236 slash 1 slash 4 slash 3.1. Um, the diary, which I will uh, quote from, is the original source. I raised this issue. Um, this was admitted during Sidney Shanberg's testimony, but based on my checking, it doesn't appear to have an E3 number. I, I mention that because um, those of us who were there know this diary was admitted by the chamber, uh, we would suggest that the court uh, may wish to assign an E3 number to it so it's clear um, that this is an admitted document. Uh, if that hasn't taken place, uh, to, my, to my knowledge, I haven't found an E3 number for it. Um, the reference uh, from Shanberg's diary is at Khmer 00963956-57. English 00898278, French 00955419. And this is again in relation to the Ministry of Information gathering um, on the 17th of April. Quote, the military leader, who appeared to be no more than 35, agreed to talk to foreign newsmen. As the conversation continued, Lon Non slips forward and quietly asks a French newsman to ask the insurgent leader if the prisoners here today or other Cambodian officials can leave the country if they wish to. A few moments later, the newsman gets a chance to ask the question. The military leader laughs softly. It will depend on the government, he says. They will make the regulations. He says he is only a military leader, adding that some of the top political and governmental leaders are not far from the city, but that they had let the military enter first to organize things." End of quote. Uh, Your Honors, uh, I will just uh, briefly uh, references. We've talked about these before. Uh, there is also evidence, of course, of what took place at the French Embassy, um, evidence that shows that the uh, Khmer Rouge were targeting uh, and seeking to arrest uh, officials uh, who had taken, uh, taken refuge in the Embassy um, E3-2694. It's a telegram uh, from the French consul on the 18th of April, 1975, identifying uh, some of the people who were officials who were in the embassy. E3-2700 is a telegram from French consul Jean Dirac on the 20th of April, 1975, uh, indicating that they were going to have to leave, let these, uh, have these people taken out of the embassy and what is of particular note um, in this telegram, E3-2700, Direct writes, quote, Following my intervention this morning, the city committee, this is referring to the Khmer Rouge, authorized the Cambodian nationals who had taken refuge in our embassy to leave it freely, with the exception of figures from the former regime who will join another group. End of quote. And your honors are aware of the subsequent admissions of executions by Ing Siri, uh, document E3 slash 604. I will not cover that again. Um, because the issue has arisen as to whether Tamak had given different instructions to the Southwest Zone, uh, I want to provide you with a um, a witness statement 
Uh, this is document E319 slash 23.3.42. Uh, your honors have admitted this. Uh, this was admitted um, at the start of Salvan's testimony on the 1st of February 2016. Um, uh, this is a, a statement from a witness who was a, a commander of a special platoon in Division I of the Southwest Army. Uh, the reference is at answers 29 to answer 37. And he is describing he was at Pochatong Airport on the 17th of April, 1975, as was Tamak. Uh, and this is what uh, the witness says took place uh, at Pochatong Airport on 17 April, starting at answer number 30. Quote, at around 9 a.m., Tamak, Sumet, and Miasmut arrived at Pochatong Airport. Tamak ordered all of the La Nol soldiers and all of the pilots to board CMC trucks. Their weapons were confiscated. They were sent to the west, having been told that they were being sent to welcome Ankar." End of quote. The witness goes on to testify that the La Nol soldiers and pilots uh, were taken away by a special unit under the direct command of Tamak, this is at answer 33, that there were around 30 or 40 people per truck. Each truck was packed full, answer 37. And at answers 34 to 35, he gives the following testimony. Question, did you hear from the soldiers who transported those people about what happened to the people? Answer, Tamak himself said that those people were taken to be smashed. Question, when did Tamak say that? Answer, Tamak said that after those lawn soldiers were trucked away. Uh, end of quote. Uh, another a piece of, another document um, that tells us what was going on with Southwest Zone military uh, following 17 April 1975. Uh, this comes from Henri Lucard's uh, book, Prisoner of the Khmer Rouge. This is document E3 slash 2419, E3 2419, English 00293762 through 63. Um, there are no translations of this excerpt presently available, but will be requested. This is what Henri Locard wrote, quote, on 20 April 1975, during a big rally at Ville Rin, the Khmer Rouge leaders asked all La Nol soldiers present to enroll with Ankar to recover territories allegedly taken by Vietnam. They first had to be trained. Some gave their names, although they were not members of the army and the mil or the military police or even the ordinary police. They filled a first contingent of about 20 trucks, and according to witnesses, a second trip was made with 20 more trucks. All were taken to the top of the elephant range at Boker Hill Station on a thousand meter cliff overlooking the coast with its casino. In actual fact, from that fatal 20th of April 1975, during about a whole week, thousands of soldiers with their families were slaughtered. They were first stripped of their clothes and jewelry. There were heaps of clothes and a mound of jewelry that formed a real stupa. Women received strokes of rotten on the pubis under the very eyes of their husbands. The victims were knocked sens senseless and thrown down from the top of the cliff. Some children survived and tried to take refuge in nearby villages, but the Khmer Rouge pursued them and executed them all." End of quote. Some documents, Your Honors, now uh, showing um, 
who was responsible, who was ordering and directing uh, the killings of Law No officials and, and uh, soldiers during this period. First, uh, there were some May 1975 uh, news reports that described uh, radio communications that had been intercepted um, from the Khmer Rouge uh, leaders. E3 slash 3393 uh, is a Los Angeles Times article dated the 4th of May, 1975. And it is reporting on a um, Newsweek uh, press release uh, that uh, they had about intercepted Khmer Rouge radio com communications on the killings of Khmer Republic officials and officers. I quote, the disclosures were said to have come from interceptions of Khmer Rouge communications by U.S. intelligence. The first victims of the bloodbath were said to be officers of the Cambodian army and some government officials. All officers down to the rank of second lieutenant were to be killed along with their wives, the intercepts were said to indicate. Newsweek quoted one official as saying, I am not speculating, I am not dealing in third-hand reports, I am telling you what is being said by the Cambodian, Cambodians themselves in their own communications, end of quote. Uh, E3 slash 3364 is a Washington Post article two days later, the 6th of May, um, relevant, it simply provided, in, indicates that the White House had provided confirmation about these intercepts. And then uh, six days later, on the 12th of May, 1975, the Washington Post wrote a further article, this is document E3 slash 3370, which states, quote, not long after the communists captured Phnom Penh, and consolidated their hold on Cambodia, they issued the following secret instructions. Eliminate all high-ranking military officials, government officials. Do this secretly. Also get provincial officers who owe the Communist Party a blood debt. These are the words translated into English that were broadcast over the Khmer Rouge communications network. U.S. intelligence intercepted the radio transmission and sent a translation to the State Department by secret cable. We have obtained a copy of the secret cable. Other radio reports from the field indicate that the blood reprisals have started. One unit, relaying orders from the Communist High Command, called for the execution of all military officers from lieutenant to colonel, with their wives and their children, end of quote. There's evidence uh, confirming uh, this, your honors. Um, document E389, I will just reference, uh, it's an interview of Ing Suri by Steve Hedder that you're well familiar with uh, at uh, Khmer 00, 062461, English 00417606, French 00332688. Uh, in a response to a question about uh, a decision of the party leaders to extend executions beyond the seven super traders, Ing Suri made this admission. Quote, that decision was not made in advance. It was decided afterwards, as far as I know, after 17 April, around the 20th, as far as I know. Meaning they decided to do whatever was required to keep that group from being able to rise up and oppose the revolution, end of quote. Another Steve Hedder interview is interview of Uk Van Chun. Document E3 slash 387, E3 387, Khmer 00 
three seven nine four eight six english zero zero three five zero two zero five and french zero zero four four one four one eight quote in april nineteen seventy five Pol Pot issued another secret policy that was wiping out all elements in the law null regime. With respect to civilian local administrators, they would be purged from sub-district level to upper echelon. Regarding soldiers, they would be swept clean from second lieutenants up to generals." End of quote. And a third interview of Matt Lee, who we talked about yesterday. E3 slash 390, English ERN 00436867 through 868, Khmer 94 through 95, French 00479807 through 808. Quote, domestic policy. Starting from this, it was imperative to dig the trunks out by the roots. Dig out both trunks and roots, the city people. They researched those people, and if they had even been first lieutenants, second lieutenants, or had worked in the courts, they were killed. To be able to kill them, they designated them all as enemies." End of quote. Your Honours, the second group of documents I want to reference uh, are evidence, is evidence related to um, Sector 13 and south, at the Southwest Zone. Sauban has given evidence of an instruction from the Sector 13 uh, Secretary uh, this is evidence that shows what was going on, actually going on uh, in that sector and the southwest zone. Um, first, uh, starting with Salvan's own uh, district, Tramcock. Uh, in addition to the evidence you've heard in this courtroom, of course, uh, about what took place at Wat Champa uh, and other locations, um, an excerpt from Meng Tri E's book, The Chain of Terror. Uh, this is uh, a document, E3-2120, uh, also uh, E3-2121. There are two different um, uh, uh, E3 numbers for this document. You need to know that because the lengthier Khmer translation is in the second one, but not the first, not the first one. Um, Meng Tri writes, uh, first of all, he's, has an entire chapter in which he talks about arrests, um, that the majority of those arrested in mid-75 and 76 were law and old soldiers and policemen. He goes on to give some examples, which I will be referencing, uh, starting with uh, at English ERN 00416383, Khmer 01098794, Four. Uh, there is no French translation. Meng Tri E writes, former, former Popol Subdistrict sub Cadre Tang, he's referring here to Popol co Commune, which was one of the communes in Tramcock. Former po Popol Subdistrict Cadre Tang stated that in mid-1975, his subdistrict chief organized the village and team chiefs to obtain personal histories of the people in Popol. He explained that in compiling histories, cadres obtained detailed information on names, duties, spouses, children, and occupations. After the personal histories were done, Chorn uh, sent the reports to the district committee, and after that, those in Popol who had been law null soldiers or policemen began regularly disappearing." End of quote. This, um, the reference to Chorn was to the Popol district, uh, uh, Popol commune chief, who incidentally was the husband of 
um, Ye Bun, who we heard in this courtroom. Um, Ye Bun, of course, gave testimony describing the same process. Second from Tramcock, uh, a written record of interview from a deceased witness, Ip Duch. Uh, this witness was the former youth chairman of the district and a member of the Krang Tachan committee. Uh, this is interview E3 slash 4627, English 00223476-77, Khmer 00163493, French 00651259-60. Question. Were the 17 April group arrested by the militia and sent to Krang Tachan? Answer, I don't know what level decided the plan. When they arrived here, they had them make biographies and anyone whose biography said they had been a soldier would disappear. Those biographies were kept at the base level, but they, upper level, decided what level had to be removed. The upper level that I'm talking about sounded like and seemed to be nationwide, meaning center level, end of quote. Your Honor, some evidence from two other districts that were also part of Sector 13, um, where uh, this alleged President, thank you, Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Let me have a short break and resume at 10.30 to continue our proceedings.